people are watching you and they're wishing you success. And you need to realize you have someone in your corner that's supporting you and caring for you. And I hope you lean on that. So I wanna leave you with a few questions and my challenge to you. And the first one is, is your ambition meaningful? Is it meaningful? Are you growing in your pursuit of your ambition or is it just a box to check off? And I hope that's not the case. I hope that this is an ambition that you thrive in, that pushes you to be better, that stretches you and cause great growth in your life. And I hope you realize that those things that you're pursuing were given by God, God-given ability, and that you thrive in those things. My next question for you is, have you tried on your ambition? I don't know how many of you, but I really, <laughs> right now I can't try on clothes in a store because they don't allow that, right? But that would be so helpful if I could. It would save me a trip back to the store for those wishful moments that I think something's going to fit and it doesn't. But there you go. You need to try on your ambition. Some people try to sprint before they've thought things through. Others hear the starting gun, but they spend too much time thinking about how long is this going to take or what kind of shoes should I wear? But they never take a step forward. You have been given tools to help you start. And how is the start going for you since you have begun? And those of you watching by Zoom, I'm imagining you have a start already. How has it gone since you took your ambition for a ride around the block? Ask yourself if your ambition lines up with what God has said for your life and what he values for you. Remember, your ambition only has value if you make space for it. Another question for you is, will it last? There's a thing called a stress test. Anybody know what I'm talking about, right? Stress test your ambition. The ambitions worth pursuing are those that have the longest shelf life. Get clear about what you believe that will last in your life. The convertible Jag, by the way, is not gonna last. I know you want it to, but it's not going to. You'll look cool for a while, but soon after a while, you're just another person stuck in traffic. So will your ambition go on for a year? Will it last 10 years? Will it last 100 years? That's something I want you to think about. As you seek your ambitions, what is the shelf life of that ambition in your life? Another question, is it all about you or will it benefit others as well? Of course, you need to be aware of how you feel, what you want and what you think, but you need to couple that with a greater amount of other awareness as well. How do the people around you closest to you feel? What do they want and what do they think as well? Make sure your compass is in the right direction and it's always pointing toward the things that will last and make a positive impact, not just in your life, but in the lives of others. You'll know you're moving toward a beautiful ambition in your life if you find yourself wanting something beautiful for the people around you at the same time. You don't need to choose between ambitions that help others or inspire just you. You make it about both. You'll be energized, you'll be grateful, and as a result, you will throw more of yourself into it. Amen? Amen. And the last question I want to leave with you is this. Is it possible to obtain your dream? Can I get a yes? Yes. Don't discard an ambition because it looks too hard or it seems impossible. There is a difference between three phrases. The first phrase is, my ambition isn't realistic. If that's the case, maybe that's an ambition you should not be striving for. But if the next phrase fits, I'm afraid to try, it may still be an ambition that you need to push towards. And then the last phrase is, this will be really hard, and yes, it will. But is it worth pursuing? Yes. Don't let the scale of your ambitions head fake you into abandoning them. You are never too young or old, never too broken or messy, never too good or bad to turn to God and ask him to give you that U-turn you deserve and you need and you desperately need to connect with God with on that as well. You will see mountains move, I promise you. You will see mountains move in front of you that maybe you yourself have placed there, by the way. 
and you will see your dreams unfold before your eyes. I want to leave you with a verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. May God bless you. Thank you for those words, Major. Next, we will be able to welcome up James, John James Pond uh, and Bo Castle. Bo Castle serves as our program administrator here in Sacramento, and they'll be uh, working together to share J JJ's testimony. After that, we'll welcome up Oscar Garcia to also share of his testimony. Enjoy. Okay. JJ, Hi. welcome here. We'll do a little social distancing. I'll keep my mask on. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll do all that stuff. But you can, like you can stand there. Uh, no, you're good. good. I'll do this for you. Okay, so. I prepared some stuff. Too. You prepared some stuff. I well, did. I was going to interview you and kind of, all but right. if you've got some stuff to say, I'm then my, uh, mine was very simple. Like, okay. what was your life like before you connected with Salvation Army? What has been your experience in our culinary arts training program? All right. And uh, what are some of your goals or your thoughts for the, for the future? So, if, you know. Fortunately, I was prepped for this. Good. <laughs> so, and I did write it down so that I would be clear and concise in what I'm trying to say. A lot happened before I came to be blessed with the opportunity to come to, par to participate in the Salvation Army Culinary Art Program. I am 61 years old after all. So a lot of stuff happened. All kidding aside, I had reached the very lowest point in my life, gone to prison, was to be released back into the community with nowhere to go and little hope for the future. I did some very intense praying to God for help and was miraculously given the chance to go to Wellspace Health's A House, where my love of cooking was reawakened. Uh, before I was to graduate from that program, again, with little hope, I was granted the opportunity to join the Salvation Army's Culinary Arts Program. Now, I thought I knew a way, my way around a kitchen, but Tony and Eddie quickly showed me that I was strictly amateur. The program taught me about safety points I had never considered, food temperatures to ensure the retardation of foodborne pathogens, the correct temperatures to, to prepare food, to ensure that it is properly cooked, cleanliness beyond anything I had anticipated. I'm talking far beyond just washing my hands. And how to create the most wonderful dishes out of the basis of materials. I mean, I learned to do everything that one can do to prepare a chicken except pluck the feathers. And believe me, when I say that I learned very much more, I know now that I have the skills to succeed in the culinary, in the culinary field that I will be an asset to any organization I have the privilege to serve. The program has changed the way I view the rest of my life. It's opened the door to the consideration of reviving an interest I used to dabble in and making it a mainstay. I have optimism in the tools to go forward and be of real service to society and make a few bucks as well. I envision a bright future where I enjoy my work, receive gratification from a job well done, and perhaps make some lifetime friends along the way. Whatever the future has in store for me from this time forth, I know that I have a new lease on life, thanks to the opportunity I've been blessed with from the Culinary Arts Program at the Salvation Army. I want to thank Tony and Eddie for putting up with my boneheaded ways and for teaching me modern, proper ways of the kitchen. I thank all the staff for letting me be a part of this family we call the Center of Hope. Thank you. Thanks, JJ. Wait, wait, wait. I'm running. <laughs> Let me just ask you this. What, what would you say to somebody who might be thinking about getting involved in a workforce development program? What would, what would be your thoughts for them? I would definitely encourage them wholeheartedly as long as I felt that they were sincerely interested in what they're wanting to do, not just checking off a box, but really wanting to get involved and do something to change your lives. Wow, that's great. Well, thank you. We, we love seeing you around. Uh, we just, uh, 
got all kinds of opportunities and, and, and things that we're interested to, for you to pursue. We've talked about the, you know, barbecue smoker program for you to help us, you know, with that and getting that launched and uh, you're helping us around, uh, you know, uh, next step transitional living programs. It is my most fervent desire to be a part of this organization in any way that I can be. I, I just, you just got to love this guy. Right? I mean, <laughs> thanks, JJ. Thank you so much. Oscar. Oscar Garcia, participant in our construction training program. So tell us, uh, you know, what was your life like uh, before you got connected with Salvation Army? What was going on? Um, before I came to the Salvation Army, um, I was broken um, mentally, physically, spiritually. Um, absolutely spiritually bankrupt is a term that uh, I learned in, at the ARC and it applied to me 100%. Um, at the ARC, I was able to find, you know, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through him, all things are possible. And I have to say that he's the reason I'm here today. He's the reason, you know, I've been restored to sanity. So my life was completely unmanageable. Not that it's 100% manageable today, but through the ARC and the Salvation Army's help, I've been able to, you know, find the tools that make my life a little more manageable and livable today. I can honestly say that today I'm living and not just existing. <clears throat> what uh tell us a little bit about the the construction program what, what did you get out of it what was your experience with that um the construction from? program was uh incredibly helpful in getting certified in uh i think four different certificates is what we get um i got to learn a lot about hazardous materials which is something that i had no idea about um i had heard about you know being hazardous material certified but i had no idea you know what exactly it entailed um, what else did we learn? We got uh, construction fundamentals, incredibly informative as far as uh, working with hand tools, pouring concrete, setting rebar, um, the fundamentals, fundamentals to get, get my foot in the door towards uh, having an actual career and not just a job. That's great. And uh, what were maybe some of your goals or your thoughts for the future? Uh, Short-term goals. I. Uh, I plan to do the best job I can at uh, Family Services. I want to thank the Salvation Army for the employment opportunity. Um, I got hired pretty much before I even completed this program. So thank you very much to the Salvation Army. Um, I plan to do my best job, you know, the best job I can possible. Um, my supervisors are already thinking about Christmas and I plan to stick around till then. Um, I've been told that there's a, there's a high demand for the Salvation Army services come Thanksgiving and Christmas time. So I plan to do, you know, to be of service and uh, to just do the best job that I can. Well, Oscar, what would you say to maybe some of the donors and contributors that have uh, come alongside and, and participated in your journey through support and supported you and others? What, what would be some of your thoughts? For that? Uh, to all the people who have made donations and contributions towards the Salvation Army and towards the Salvation Army's training programs, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's made a big difference in my life. I know it's made a big difference in the lives of uh, my fellow graduates. You're giving us tools to, like I said, have a career and not just a job, to get our lives back together, to move forward, not only for ourselves, but for our family, for our loved ones, for our community. So thank you very much for all your contributions. And to anyone watching this that you know is thinking about contributing, do it because uh, you're, you're helping out people who have hit their bottom, who are looking for a way up, and for, who are looking for a way out of the insanity. So thank you very much. Thank you, Oscar. And, and you're helping us now with, at, at Family Services, Correct. and I've already heard from uh, you know, your supervisor just uh, pieces of your spiritual journey and thank how you. pleased they are with your, your spiritual progress, even since you've been a uh, part of this, how, how, how joy, what joy you brought to them in sharing your spiritual journey. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's always good to hear some of the background, right? And some of the transformation. Uh, I'd like to invite up Christina Angelis, uh, the president of our Women's Auxiliary 
here in Sacramento with some words of encouragement for our culinary graduates. Christina. I'm a little short, so I'm gonna put it down a little bit. Um, as president of the Salvation Army's Women's Auxiliary, I wanna personally congratulate culinary and construction graduates. You've made a great success and you're on the road to a new part of your life. Uh, it's been wonderful to see each of you in your different programs acquire skills that will help you on your way to obtaining employment and possibly some of you already have jobs, I understand. And the culinary program and construction, it's a perfect example of how a person with determination can better the lives of themselves and their families. And doing that makes your families love you even more and more grateful to you. And all of you pray together for everything to happen in the future. The culinary program for me and for Florence, my fellow uh, auxiliary member, it's really to our hearts because both of our sons are in the culinary program, or not culinary program, but they um, work for restaurants. And even Florence's uh, son worked for a restaurant and then also taught uh, school in Maui. And so because of that, that's why we feel that we always wanna be here when everybody graduates. And one of the things that my son always told me that he always had as far as the culinary portion is he always had a notebook and he always kept notes and kitchen notes and recipes. And because of that, that's why we give these out to the culinary students. Unfortunately, the ones on Zoom aren't going to get one tonight, but the culinary students here will. And as your lives flourish, um, please remember that the Salvation Army gave you a hand up many years ago when I was a young teenage mother. I actually had help from the Salvation Army and their daycare program. And that's why I became a volunteer. So as your lives get better, maybe one time you will want to help the community as well in some form or another for the community. And we're confident that each of you graduates will advance and thrive in your respective careers. And we wish everyone, all the graduates, the best of luck on your road to success. Thank you. Thank you for those words. I would like to go ahead and invite up our uh, culinary instructor, uh, our instructors, so Tony and Eddie, as well as Majors Botchen and Christine. We're doing pre 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 uh, the presentation of certificates, correct? Did I miss it? No, that's what it says, presentation of certificates. So come on up, those that are to be on the platform. How this is going to work is, uh, uh, for both the construct, uh, culinary and construction, uh, the students will enter this side. You'll greet the majors, myself, Bo will hand you your certificate, and then uh, you'll stand off to the side, we'll grab a picture, and you'll return to your seats, okay? But because we do have a number of folks that are not physically in the room, we're going to acknowledge them first by name, applaud for them, and then we'll go with those in the room, okay? So I'm going to take a step back. Christine is going to read the names and we'll proceed. So the first culinary student that we'd like to recognize is Makora Shellman. She is in Colorado. Congratulations. All right, and live in person today, we have Miss Alicia Patterson. Thank you. 
All right, and we also have, again, John James Pond. If you would scoot to here, we'll gather around, we'll snap a picture, and proceed. <laughs> right up front. You're the front and center. <laughs> and I see multiple cameras in the audience. Yes. And smile. One more applause. All right, <laughs> wonderful. I'd now like to invite up Chris Ann Bechtel, member of our Sacramento Advisory Board, to give words of encouragement as well. Thank you, Lieutenant, and um, Thank you, Christina, for inviting me to say a few words this evening. This is always really one of my favorite events. Uh, it is really heartwarming to see everybody in the room, especially the graduates, but having families here is so special. And um, I am speaking on behalf of the advisory board. Our president, unfortunately, is out of town, so I was lucky enough to be tapped for this wonderful uh, honor. I want to I'm going to keep my comments brief because Christina told me I had to. So um, I have to first just, just say that meal was incredible. I mean, I just think... I thought that was just one of the best, and I've eaten a lot of Tony's cooking. So um, over the seven years I've been on the board... Um, and as I was preparing my remarks for this evening, I couldn't help but think of someone that you may have seen in the news this week, the woman who won America's Got Talent. Did anybody see that show? She um, has a very sad story. She's a 30-year-old woman who's had cancer three times. She has a 2% chance of surviving. Um, but she performed and she actually won. And she, it, was a, it was a song she wrote herself but they interviewed her and she had a couple of comments that just really stuck with me and I thought I would share them with you this evening. Um, first, she said she did not want to be defined by the bad things that have happened to her in her life, that she's so much more than that. And then the thing that I thought was really even more impactful, and she just said this kind of as an aside, she said, you cannot wait for life to not be hard anymore before you decide to be happy. And I thought, you know, I thought of it again tonight because I looked around this room and everybody's happy. And this is one of those really great celebrations where we get to come together and honor everyone in this room because we've all had a part in the success of our graduates today. Um, um, I believe that the graduates tonight and all those who have come through this program before have instinctively known that they can find happiness through the fulfillment they would have if they made a few decisions. And those would be to decide to make a commitment perhaps greater than, greater than any other commitment they've ever made, uh, to dedicate themselves to a regimen that will change them forever. That's a big deal. Uh, to challenge themselves intellectually, physically, and maybe even spiritually. To show their steadfastness in seeing this program through because I think it, it, it may have presented challenges along the way for, for various people. And to know that in the end, finding gainful employment would provide some of life's richest rewards. So as a result of their efforts, I see great joy in this room tonight. And it does all of us a, a lot of good to see all of you here. As um, I thought I was coming on before the certificate so I can skip over this next paragraph. Um, as a representative of the, of the board, as I said, uh, I would like to speak for all of the board members, some of whom are here 
uh, and let you know that the board has supported the workforce development program since in its inception, which I was trying to think was about seven years ago, maybe six years ago. Uh, there was a time when this program did not exist at the Salvation Army in Sacramento. So we have a lot to be thankful for. And we have provided our ideas. In fact, someone mentioned the smoker. That was one of our board members, Bob and Mulvaney, came up with the concept of getting that smoker going, and I know it's been a huge success. We've obviously provided funding, but we've always provided the belief that this program truly provides a very integral piece of the puzzle. It brings the concept of lives changed full circle. And to gainful and rewarding employment and as the woman that I was referencing earlier in my, in my talk, um, tonight is a result of our graduates making a conscious decision to be happy despite the obstacles faced along the way. Uh, again, on behalf of the Del Oro Advisory Board, we wish every graduate every possible success as you reap the rewards of your commitment and your effort. And know that you and your families are in our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers, whether you're aware of it or not. You are a major topic of our interest and our concern and our discussion at board meetings. And we are all there for you if you ever want to reach out to us. So I wish you all the very best. And I have two buddies here tonight, and you know who you are, but just want to say good going. Thank you, Chris Ann. I'd like to go ahead and invite up uh, those that will be behind me as we do the presentation of the construction certificates. Again, we'll enter from this side. We'll stand there and then we'll grab a picture. And the picture, I know it feels a little bit awkward, but we are capturing it on camera, but also there's those in the audience capturing as well. So without much further, we'll grab some certificates and get going. So we're going to first recognize the construction training program graduates that are not here with us today. So we first have Nicholas Forkham. Jaime Mendez. Brian Patino. William Pecorini. We have Josephine Canton. Damian Carlos. Jason Ferdin. Justin Gonzalez. Antoine Lyles, Daniel Luz, Jose Martinez, Jazleen Parker, Lily Rents, Jack Summers, Tyler Villalobos. <laughs> Chasen Zorb, and Jessica Johnson. And a reminder, they're not here because they're at work. So that's <laughs> a great thing, right? That also includes the group that did not get to have the ceremony because of COVID last fall. So that's why it's a huge list. But now let's celebrate those that are with us today. Rafael Ambriz. <laughs> David Duro Oscar Garcia. Yeah. 
John Hebert. Timothy McDonald. And Valentino Rodriguez. All right, gentlemen, go ahead and gather to the front here. We'll be right behind you. <laughs> All right. construction training program, uh, it had a special sponsor this time around. It also came with a whole new partnership. Uh, for our construction program, we were able to bring on board uh, the Laborers Training and Retraining Fund of Northern California, and they helped revamp and bring uh, some great energy, great life to that program, and at a rate where we can even impact more lives uh, in uh, with good donor intent, right? Uh, so it, we can train 25 individuals for the same price as what we used to train 10. So more lives, more impact, more transformation of, of individuals and community. The, uh, this most recent session was underwritten and funded by SMUD, so Sacramento Municipal Utility District, and we have a pre-recorded comment from one of their board members. So. Please face towards the screen and hear from SMUD. Hello, everyone. I'm Rosanna Ferber, the Ward 4 representative on the SMUD Board of Directors, and I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to congratulate the graduates of the Salvation Army's Construction Training Program. Congratulations, you did it. As part of the partnership we've developed with the Salvation Army, through our Sustainable Communities Program, SMUD provided 10 scholarships for students to complete the training program. Students were trained as construction craft laborers for careers that range from asphalt paving to hazardous waste removal. Regional workforce development is a key priority of SMUD's Sustainable Communities Initiative. Healthy communities rely on a strong workforce where all residents have the opportunity to follow their career dreams. Sustainable communities places an emphasis on serving customers in communities who have traditionally been left behind by large institutions. By leveraging our partnerships with underserved communities, nonprofits, small businesses, and educational partners, we will ensure that SMUD's 2030 Zero Carbon Plan is inclusive for all customers in all communities. In late April, the SMUD board passed the Zero Carbon Plan. This is the most aggressive carbon reduction plan of any large utility in the United States. We're committed to removing all carbon emissions from our power mix by 2030. This will greatly improve local air quality 
and provide an economic boost for green jobs. By partnering, in this case, with the Salvation Army, we're able to reach deep into the community to better understand the challenges that many residents face in pursuing good paying jobs. So again, let me say congratulations, students. Thank you to the Salvation Army for making this a better, more equitable place to live, work, and play. Congratulations. SMUD is certainly a, uh, a tremendous and wonderful community partner, one of many that the Salvation Army gets to enjoy having partner with us, um, many of which come to us through uh, networking, through connections from our advisory board, our women's auxiliary, and the general public, and also the lives and testimonies of those graduates that go out and make a positive impact. As Major Keith uh, makes his way to give our benediction, I just want to give a special thanks to those that were able to join us in the room. Uh, we do appreciate your presence, and we love that we get to celebrate so many graduates uh, this evening and moving forward. And also a thanks to uh, Captains Masongo for opening up uh, the Alhambra campus for this event. Major Keith. Well, what sticks out to my mind is the, what my wife shared earlier was, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. You know, the army part of the Salvation Army really talks about how it takes an army, and that takes each and every one of you to be part of that. And basically, we're all needed. God created you for a purpose. You have a need. God wants you to fulfill that need through the actions that you've taken this step that you've taken. So it's such an amazing thing. So thank you so much for joining our army as we make a difference in this world in your lives and lives around us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just again thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you are here right now. And Lord, that you've made it possible for these uh, people to be able to uh, just make a difference in their lives, to choose a new direction, one that you have for them. Lord, you know what you have in their future. You know the jobs that are already lined up. You know the lives that you already got prepared for them. So, Lord, I pray that you would just bless them, Lord, that you would watch over them, keep them safe, help them to stay on the track, Lord, that you've put there, and let them, Lord, just flourish with your grace and your power. And all God's children said, amen. Go for it.